Assassin's Creed is a 12-game series featuring massive open worlds and tons of hidden secrets. With the recent announcement of Assassin's Creed Mirage, a game set to harken back to the structure and design of the first Assassin's Creed, I think it would be best to take the series back to its roots. These are 10 things you didn't know about the original Assassin's Creed. Number 10, half horse, half man, half terrifying. The horse in the original Assassin's Creed is a handy and trustworthy steed to get you from city to city. I bet you didn't know that horse was actually a man. Former Ubisoft developer Charles Randall revealed that because technical limitations at the time only allowed for bipedal characters, they had to stretch out the model of an in-game NPC and animated and rigged it to move like a horse. A similar workaround was found for the character of Malik, whose missing arm was actually a tiny scrunch up little arm inside his sleeve. Number 9, Assassins Roll Out. When traversing through the cities of Damascus and Acre, there are sets of window arrangements that form the shape of the front of G1 Optimus Prime, in truck form. Number 8, The Sacred Texts. NPC dialogue in Acre has a civilian confused as to which text he's quoting. Well, the Bible does say God helps those who help themselves. Nah, it doesn't, actually. That's from one of Aesop's fables. The Bible says quite the opposite, in fact. Many passages are being patient and faithful and waiting for the Lord to decide if he wishes to assist. Well, I say we've waited long enough. Number 7. Assassin's Couch Co-op According to Julian Mercerone, former Ubisoft technical director, the original Assassin's Creed experimented with having local multiplayer. According to an article and interview on DualShockers, it states that, in fact, there was a bug. While he doesn't know when it was patched, at some point if a second controller was plugged into the console, a second Assassin would appear on screen. The team didn't even test for those features as they thought they were disabled, and that's how the bug appeared. Although there aren't any other details on what multiplayer would have looked like, multiplayer features wouldn't be featured in another Assassin's Creed until Assassin's Creed Brotherhood in 2012. Number 6, Side Missions, Schmide Missions. Although modern day Assassin's Creed games pack in a lot of side content. I mean, I got Valhalla on launch day and I still haven't cleared the map. The original Assassin's Creed didn't have any, until five days before release. Charles Randall detailed that the game was ready to ship and had passed all levels of scrutiny until the CEO's kid got his hands on it. The kid reported that the game was boring and there was nothing to do. Randall's lead came to him and proposed the idea to put in side missions, with the stipulation that we have to put all these side missions in the game in five days, and they have to be bug free because the build is going to be burned directly to disc and released to retail. Randall described the next five days as a blur. The only notable bug that remained in game from the frantic five day stint is that one of the Templars you're supposed to assassinate falls through the geometry and is unable to be accessed, causing you to restart your game to get a full gamer score. I think Randall puts it best though. I know it's a miracle that the game just didn't melt your console. Number 5, The Animus. The fictional device that allows Desmond to travel into his ancestors' genetic memories is called The Animus. This is a direct reference to part of the collective unconscious theory by psychoanalyst Carl Jung. Jung described the animus as the unconscious masculine side of a woman and the anima as the unconscious feminine side of a man, each transcending the personal psyche. Although not specific to just Assassin's Creed 2007, a number of the female characters throughout the greater series have names relating to the stages of anima development as detailed by Jung. Eve, Maria Auditore de Firenze, and Sophia Sartor, just to name a few. Number 4, Multilingual. One of the many real-life historical figures you run into during your time in the Holy Land is Richard I, commonly known as Richard the Lionheart. During your interaction, all of his dialogue is spoken with a French accent. <laughs> oh yes, a great favor indeed. Now our enemies will be that much stronger in their convictions. Although the King of England at the time, Richard spent most of his life in the Angevin domains in France. That would put him on the modern day western side of the country, reinforced by his appointment as Duke of Normandy. Number 3, Historical Fiction. When creating the world of the first Assassin's Creed, the team at Ubisoft looked to real-life historical figures as well as works of fiction surrounding the time of the Crusades to layer into their storytelling. The story of Altair's order was inspired by the life of Hassan i Sabah. He is reputed as the founder of the real-life order of assassins, known as the Azari Ismaili State or Hashashin, and ruler of the mountain fortress known as Alamut. 
In turn, Alamuts was used as the title of a 1938 novel by Vladimir Bartol. The novel is set entirely at the fortress of Alamuts and follows a young soldier joining the ranks, interacting with Hassani Sabah frequently throughout the siege of Alamuts by the Seljuk Empire. The Assassin's Creed team at Ubisoft use many of the plot points in the novel as story threads throughout the tale of Assassin's Creed. The novel also creates the famous main principle of the Assassin's Brotherhood. In the novel, it is stated by Hassani Sabah as nothing is absolute reality, all is permitted. In the game, the motto is tweaked to nothing is true, everything is permitted. Altair's garb is also directly pulled from the novel. The timeline of the game is not the same as the novel, however, with Altair and the members of his sect of Hashashin existing during the Third Crusade in 1191. Hassani Sabah died in 1124. Number two, on eagle's wings. Eagle imagery pops up again and again throughout the series, but especially in the first Assassin's Creed. When designing the look of Altair, animator Kai Nguyen used a bird of prey as the design concept. The original design had Altair in long, flowing robes, but because of hardware limitations, they created a much sleeker, feathered look for his garments. Obvious eagle inclusions are the eagle that flies away when you mount a viewpoint in any of the major cities, eagle vision, and the aviary screech when performing a leap of faith. But because the assassin was not supposed to be the main character in the original concept of the game, he didn't have a name. When the assassin role became the main focus of the story, they gave him the name Altair, which means the flying eagle in Arabic. Number one, Prince of Persia, Assassin. Initial development for Assassin's Creed started in 2004 as a Prince of Persia game. After the success of Sands of Time, Ubisoft tasked Prince of Persia director Patrice Desilets to begin work on the next game in the series for the very mysterious seventh generation of consoles. In order to accomplish something that would live up to the intense hype surrounding the power of the PS3 and Xbox 360, Desilets ditched the linear progression model of the Prince of Persia levels and replaced it with a vast open world set in the Holy Land during the height of the Crusades. Along with the massive scope, the game added huge crowds and easy parkour access to every level of the three major cities for the most immersion possible. To put it in perspective, Sands of Time could only allow for eight characters on screen at any given time. Assassin's Creed allowed for 120. But after nearly two years of development, Ubisoft was not ready to give over the project to a new IP. The game had you play as an assassin bodyguard of the prince and watch over him through guided scenarios in which you'd have to use your skills to save him or get him out of other perilous situations. So basically the entire game was one big escort mission. Hmm. Thankfully the prince character was dropped and the Assassin's Creed evolved into the game we know it as today. Assassin's Creed defined what the open world genre would look like for Ubisoft during the past three console generations. The series itself has gone through some award-winning highs, lows that have made it a divisive series throughout the gaming industry, and a reinvention that flipped the formula in a fascinating way. It's been enthralling to go back to 2007 and see where the series has come from, along with the thought and principle that went into its world and story. With the new entry in the series, Assassin's Creed Mirage freshly announced, an emphasis on a back-to-basics mentality from Ubisoft will be interesting to see how they execute it within the framework of how different Assassin's Creed looks and feels today from its inception. For more on Assassin's Creed Mirage, make sure you subscribe to GameSpot, check out our rock star editor Jordan Ramey's chat with the art director of Assassin's Creed Mirage, come find me on Twitter at Stewie Reviewy, and thanks for watching.